In the previous video, we have added some functionality to our road helper script. So now I would like to visualize this graph so that you can have some understanding of what we have created. So visualize our graph. Again, we will need to open our scripts folder and go to our AI and to our AI director script. Okay. So as you can see at the top of it, we have something called adjacency graph that is used by our pedestrian path, get pedestrian path. So let's control RR to rename it and let's type pedestrian graph. Okay, let's copy this graph. So this uh, field and let's create another one and let's call it car graph. And this graph will be graph that we will create. Adjacency graph, if you go to the definition, is just an implementation of adjacency graph. So a graph that contains a dictionary and for each vertex, which is a point on our graph, we have a list of vertices, which are the neighbors of this graph. And this will allow us to create the system of the points that are connected. So the car markers that are connected with other markers. And you can take a look at it. We are implementing this class in the pedestrian AI tutorial. Okay, let's close it. And let's start creating our graph for the cars. So let's again select the pedestrian graph and let's see what is the method that is uh, creating it. So as you can see for the pedestrian graph we are clearing the graph and we are calling get a graph method. So let's click on this get a graph method control R R to rename it. Let's call it get uh, create a pedestrian graph and this will log the pedestrian graph and return the A star result for the pedestrian path. So let's copy this method and let's slide down below the create a pedestrian graph and let's paste it here below this method and let's rename it from get pedestrian graph to get car graph. Okay, now this method gets a path which is our general path that we have found between two points on our road, start position and end position which we do not currently have. Still, we can change the pedestrian graph in the content of this method to be car graph. And let's change it everywhere. Okay. And since we cannot really run the A star algorithm right now because we do not have start and end position, let's return a null. And we will need to change the create a pedestrian graph to change a car graph. And we do not have this method, so alt enter and generate this method here in this uh, class. Now it will be generated below, so we will need to make sure that we fill it in and then we will be able to create our graph. The idea is simple. We are going to look for each uh, road prefab on our path and we are going to simply connect the road prefab markers with the markers on the next road prefab on our path to create our graph. So to do this, we are going to, uh, instead of throwing an exception, we are going to call for, and this will be for loop, so double tap to create it from the snippet, from i equals zero, i less than path, dot count i plus plus we are going to access var current position equals path with index i so this will be the first position on our path next we want to get the reference to the root structure so var root structure equals our placement manager dot get structure at and we are going to pass here our current position. Placement manager can get access to the structure model that has the reference in turn to the road helper script or actually can access uh, for us the road helper script. Next, we will need to get the list of markers on this road. So var markers list equals and we can access our road structure dot get and we do not have this method so get car markers and since we do not have this method so alt enter on it choose generate uh, this method in the structure model right click on it and go to the definition and now we are in the structure model uh, class now this class allows us to create our game objects on our map and also allows us to get a reference to for example road helper and this is used by our pedestrian AI. 
Again, we have created it in the previous tutorial series. So, for this to work, we will need to implement here a couple of methods that will allow us to extract data from our root helper. And as you might recall, we have already added a couple of methods to our root helper. So let's copy the line from get position markers and let's paste it as the return value. And we are going to not return the object, but we are going to re return a list of markers. A list of marker. And we are going to get the transform get child zero, get component root helper, and we will want to call get all car markers. We have implemented this method already. Now we can slide up and we have something called get nearest marker two. So what we will want to do is click on it, control RR, and we are going to call get nearest pedestrian marker two. And let's copy this method. Let's slide down and paste it. And we are going to rename it get nearest car marker two. We are going to get the position. And again, we have implemented a already a method. So we are going to call transform get child zero get component root helper. And we can call get closest. And we should have get closest car marker position. Let's simply pass to it position. And this will be it for this script. Let's go back to our AI director. I have it opened in Visual Studio. Okay, and now we have our markers list. So what we can do here is simply loop for each tab tab to create this from the snippet for each var marker in our markers list. And if we loop through it, what we can do is we can call on our car graph and we can add to this graph a new vertex which will have the position of our marker. So we are going to call graph add vertex since graphs are made out of vertex and edges where vertex are the points of interest and edges are simply the connections between different points. So we are going to call on our marker dot position. We have created a vertex on our graph. Next, we are going to loop for each our var marker neighbor. And you might recall that we have in our marker dot adjacent markers. And those are markers that are uh, that we have set as the connections between different markers. So we have uh, we did it in a previous video, and we had uh, we drew those connections using the red line. So those are all the connected markers for our marker. And what we can do is simply call graph uh, or car graph, and we can call add edge between our current marker, which will be the marker dot position, and the marker neighbor. And I think I have misspelled it. Okay, marker neighbor. And this will add edge between those. We need to call on it dot position. So now we have created what we have drew using red lines. So now our graph knows exactly which marker is connected with which uh, neighbor. Now the next step would be to connect the markers that are open for connections with the markers on the next root prefab. But I have mentioned also that for the curve, we will have four markers that are open for connections, and we will need to only take two connections that are the shortest so that we have the correct connections and discard the connections that are longer, that reaches the points on the other end of our curve uh, road prefab. So to do this, we will need to add to our method at the top of our car, uh, create a car graph, a dictionary. So let's create a dictionary. And we are going to create a dictionary of marker and vector three position. We are going to call it temp dictionary equals new dictionary. So basically, we are going to check after we get the markers list, we are going to check var limit distance equals marker list dot count. And if the count is greater than two markers or actually greater than three markers, then we will know that we may have multiple open for connections markers on our road prefab. So we will want to clear our temp dictionary. So temp dictionary dot clear. And in our loop, 
when we are looping through each marker. Now we are going to create a new line. After we have added our uh, neighbors, we are going to check if our marker, the marker that we are looping through, dot open for connections, and we will need to check if we have a next path, uh, next root prefab on our path. And i plus one is less than path dot count. So if our marker is open for connections and we have the next root prefab, and here what we want to type is var next root position equals our placement manager dot get structure at, and we need to pass the position. So we are going to pass the path with index i plus one, which will be the next position on our path. And we are going to use our bool flag limit distance. So if we know that we may have more open for connections marker, so if limit distance, we are going to add the possible edge to our temp dictionary. So temp dictionary dot add, and we are going to add the marker that we are currently looping through and the next root position dot get nearest marker, car marker two, and we are going to pass the marker dot position. So this will find us the closest marker on the next road position, but we do not want to add it yet to our graph since we want to discard the uh, connections between the uh, markers that are on the other edge of our road prefab. And else, if we only have two uh, car markers on our prefab, we can simply add the car markers to our graph. So what we are going to type is car graph dot add edge. And you are going to pass here a marker dot position. And we are going to copy the same next road, get nearest position to statement that we have typed above. So if we want to limit the number of connections, number of edges, we will want to look through this dictionary next. If not, then we can simply add this edge to our car graph and it will be done. Now let's exit this for each loop. Since we will make sure that we can add the edges that we need that we have placed in our temp dictionary to our graph. So what we will need to do is if our limit distance is true, we are going to open parentheses and call var distance sorted markers. And we are going to simply sort our temp dictionary. We are going to call dot order by and this is from the link library. And this method will allow us to sort our positions in our dictionary using a, speci a specified condition. So open parentheses and type X, which will be the point in our dictionary. So key value pair, such as so lambda expression equals and greater sign vector three dot distance. So we want to check the distance between the X dot key. So, uh, this is the marker dot position and the position saved as x dot value so the key of our dictionary we have created dictionary of marker and vector 3 vector 3 is the position to the closest marker on the next road prefab and since we want to sort it we are going to uh, sort it and save it as the list of key value pairs and now we are going to simply call for loop and we know that we only want to add two connections to our graph since from a straight road so the road that has uh, only two markers we can only create two connections to any other prefab and from any other prefab again we have only two lanes so that there could be only two connections so let's call the parameter j let's uh, tab to move to the length and let's set it to less than two j plus plus and we are going to call car graph dot add edge and we are going to simply take the distance assorted markers with index j which is the first so the marker and vector three pair that it has the lowest distance and we are going to call on it dot key which is the marker dot position and we are going to add to it again our distance sorted markers with index j dot value and basically this will give us the connection between for example the straight road and the curve only on one side and I think I did better job explaining it in the pedestrian AI tutorial. So now, last thing that we will want to do is simply to debug.log this graph. 
that we have created to verify that this code works. And as you might recall, at the top here, we have created our graph that is accessible. So car graph uh, will have all the connections between different markers on our road. And if we slide to the bottom of this class, we should have an update method that debug.draw lines between the vertices of our graph. For now, this is print, uh, printing only the pedestrian graph. Let's select this code, let's right click on it, quick actions, and let's choose extract method. Let's call it draw graph. And since it only draws the pedestrian graph, let's type here as the parameter adjacency graph. Let's type graph as the name. And let's change the pedestrian graph in this method to be the graph that we pass to this method. Okay, so in for first for each loop, in the second for each loop, and that's it. So now what we can do is pass to our draw graph a car graph. And this will be, that's how we are going to debug our graph that we have found. Last thing that we will need to do is actually to call this create a car graph somewhere, and we are calling it in the get car path. So we will need to call this get car path somewhere. So in the top right corner of Visual Studio, we can uh, see this drop down list of all the methods that we have in our uh, script, in our class. So what we can do is choose the try spawning a car method. And here we would like to call our create a car graph method. Here is the if statement. After we create our car, we can call var car path equals get car path to which we will need to pass the path that we had found in the uh, using placement manager that get path between so path and we are going to pass vector 3 0 and vector 3 0 since we do not have those positions and we are not using them right now so now hopefully we will be able to see our graph hopefully debugged to us as the gizmo so let's save it let's go back to unity great now we have typed everything correctly, let's maximize is, uh, the window on play, let's start and let's choose the road, let's place our road, let's place a house on one side, special structure on the other side, uh, make sure that you have gizmos enabled and let's press spawn a car and you should see this red, those red lines which represent our graph. Okay, so you can see that we have our graph created for us. Now, of course, our car is not following it because now we still do not know the start and end positions. But now we have our graph and we can potentially find those positions and use the graph. So let's try adding some more roads and we have some issue in our code. So let's go to our scripts folder AI and let's open up our AI director. Great. Let's slide down to our try spawning an agent. And as you can see, when we are calling the path, we are calling the get path between start position and position and we pass true as the flag to is agent uh, flag to is agent bool flag and this will mean that we are not going to find a path for a road which can go through empty slots or uh, through empty cells and road cells but rather we only want to move through road cells and if we slide to our try spawning car I have forgotten to add it to our get path between method. So let's add it at the end of our get path between method to get our path. And now our agent will only travel through our roads. So let's save it. Let's go back to Unity. Great. Now if we press play and we create a more sophisticated road with some four way and a three way and a curve and we place house on one end of this road and a special structure on another. And if we now spawn our car, you can already see that our graph in red was created for the whole length of our road. Of course, our car is traveling through the center of our road, but now we can see that we have our graph and using a simple A star algorithm, we can calculate the path if we only know the start and the end points. So we are going to take care of finding out the start and end point in the next video. See you there.